Good evening, everyone. Impromptu video now. Just a, just a quick one on, on a few issues, a few things that I sort of cropped up in the aftermath that I've sort of thought more about. Um, Alan Maximan, the possibility of him leaving in the summer is one. I sort of touched on it the other day in a Friday Reflections video. You know, rumours have been flying around 50 million, 40 million. Um, another thing I want to touch on is Matt Ritchie yesterday. And I'm sure there's a third thing I was thinking earlier that I'm sure will pop up. But yeah, Matt Ritchie, first of all. Um, I rewatched the game, extended highlights, and I rewatched the first half in particular. And it, it struck me that in my uh, morning after show this morning, I may. <laughs> I've played that on Matt Ritchie quite a bit. He, he, he was very, very good. I said that he, he was the same as Jacob Murphy, that he didn't have a bad game, he didn't have a fantastic game. But um, obviously I forgot to mention it was an assist for, for Dummett's goal. Um, which, yeah, okay, it's, it is an assist, but people don't rave about corners as much as, say, you would if it was... But, you know, when, whenever Beckham took a corner... Um, as soon as it was put in, you would acknowledge the header, but then you go shut oh, up, back in corner, of course. But um, oh, thank you. Yeah, it it was a fantastic ball floated in. Fantastic, right, right on Paul Dummett's head. He, he didn't even have to uh, run or right? he just had to get up good and boom, in it went. Um, incredible cross. Also, um, the ball for Wilson's first goal, I believe, was 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 a Matt Ritchie. I, I would say a Matt Ritchie trademark pass since he's come back into the team. I'm sure he's done this his whole career. And I can think of just off the top of my head now, just from saying that, numerous occasions of him doing it. Um, at times last season, particularly under Rafa Benitez. Obviously, for Newcastle. Um... But yeah, it's become the trademark Richie special pass since he's come back into the team. That whipped or curled low sort of what well, is a cross? It's not a cross, is it? That whipped low pass down the wing, down the channel, around the fullback, which prior to Wilson coming back into the team, it was good. And Joe Linton read it a few times, but ASM was, was the, the main beneficiary. But now we've got Callum Wilson, that fit firing. Um, a few people have played down how well he did last, uh, the last night. Yeah, last night. I, I thought his overall game was superb. I think just, just his movement alone, he doesn't need to touch the ball. His movement alone makes such a difference. But anyway, now we've got him making those moves in the channels. Someone like Matt Ritchie, He's playing those balls down and it showed for the first goal. I know it was a back pass and he latched onto it, but that pressure was put on. Oh, we've got ambulance coming up here. Um, that pressure was put on by the player and um, it, it was fantastically well executed. Just let this ambo go past me. Fabulous pass. So, I, I, on the flip side, I think I focused so much on Dubravka, obviously Wilson scoring the two goals. I was so happy for Dummett and Joe Willock that I think I, I missed out um, Matt Ritchie so much. I'm sorry, mate. But yeah, it, it wasn't just it, that pass down the wing. He did that numerous times. He rarely gives the ball away. I noticed yesterday, he, he, he really seemed to have struck up a nice verbal understanding with Paul Dummett in the fact that I've seen Paul Dummett is one of the players he shouts at the least um, it might be a different case on the field I don't know I'm obviously not there but you know they seem to have got a good understanding between them so it was a little bit um, disappointing to see Ian Acho um, that goal obviously he, he goes inside Dummett then comes back inside Richie who's covering him behind um, but to be fair Ian Acho is a quality striker and he's been on a right tear up recently so is what it is. Right, ASM. ASM signed a new contract last November, I believe. Um, that was the first Friday Reflections video, I think. I was driving in from work. Um, which ties him to the club, the club till 20, 
26. Now, since he's come back, he's been superb. At times earlier on in the season, he's been, he was very, very good. Last season, at times, he was superb. So, the question is, are we going to have serious offers for him this summer? I believe... Well, there's two questions. Are we going to have serious offers for him? Does he want to go? I think it's a no to both of those. I think ASM, there's quotes come out online saying he doesn't want, he wants to be pushing up the table, he doesn't want to be in another relegation battle. Absolutely fine. I get that. I, I would like to think that's the attitude of every single player at Newcastle. I'd like to think there's no one there who just thinks, oh, you know, I'm just glad to be playing for Newcastle. I don't mind where we finish. You know, I just want to play for the team. Um, you know, so I'm glad that, that he's got that ambition. I think he'll give us one more year. I think he'll give us one more year. I think he, he'll he'll and this depends on. This is irrelevant as towards uh, as to who the manager is. I think it'll be a case of if it's still the Ashley regime, Lee Charney and Steve Bruce as the manager. I think he'll say, do you know what? Um, We've had two years now. We, we bought some quality players in the last summer. Um, I'll give it one more year with Bruce. See how, if we can progress and go up the table. And play more matches like that last night. Because that, that, that was very, very good. I've got another uh, kind of monster on the go. Front foot football. Front foot play, which is not something we've seen very often at all under Bruce. I mean, a few matches stick out. Um, this season, maybe the Everton away. Uh, Burnley at home. No, I would say not even that. Everton away. Um, Bournemouth away last season, maybe. But anyway, so... He wants progress, and I think he gives Steve Bruce another year. Obviously, if we had a, a new taker, if we if the takeover does happen, we have a new owner come in, fresh enthusiasm, fans are back. It'll be fucking an amazing place to play. Um, we'll have a better manager, so I think that would obviously keep him as well. Um, in terms of is anyone going to come in to buy him? In the current financial market with COVID. I don't think anyone is going to be able to afford him. And before you spit out your drinks or whatever, afford what Newcastle's valuation of him. Now, I'm sure there's X amount of teams who think he's probably, you know, with COVID, would, would want to buy him, but they don't want to pay any more than, say, 30 million. Considering Newcastle bought him for, what, 15, I think? 15 million? So they wouldn't want to pay any more than, uh, I think it's 15 or 18, it might even be 20. But they wouldn't want to pay any more than 30 million. Newcastle, I imagine, have probably got somewhere in the region of 45 to 50 million on his head. That might even increase if he scores a few more goals. Well, we've got three games left, haven't we? You know, if he plays well against City, the best team in the league, the champions, if he plays against City and lights them up and does really well, you know, stands out and then rips Sheffield United to bits, which I'm praying he does, and then does a job on Fulham on the last day, might even sneak a late selection into the front squad. If that happens then that price tag may, may increase. But in the current financial climate, I, can, I don't think any teams will pay what Newcastle want for him. I don't think many teams will think, do you know what? We rate him about 30 million, we'll pay 50 for him. Do you know, it just, it, that money isn't around at the moment. Um, I think a lot of teams will go to Newcastle, what's your price? They'll go 50, 55 million. And they'll go, <laughs> he's good, but he ain't that good. He's had quite a few injuries. So it'll be interesting, interesting to see um, what happens, but I can't see him leaving in the summer. Same with Callum Wilson. You know, Callum Wilson 
he, in every interview he gives, he seems committed. He says he loves the area. <clears throat> he's got a good relationship with the fans online. However, I mean, he's played at St James's Park before, obviously, for, Bour for Bournemouth. But um, he, he doesn't have the same... Um, he hasn't had that relationship with the fans on the pitch yet because obviously there's been no fans. So, when we have our final game of the season, uh, Sheffield United, which, let's be honest, we should be beating them. You know, Crystal Palace beat them convincingly earlier 2-0. Um, you know, if, if we have a, avoid anything other than a 9-0 defeat at City, you know, we should be raring to go for that Sheffield game. You know, unless we've got a load of injuries. Um, so it'll be brilliant that he, he'll be able to feel that appreciation and he'll come off that pitch excuse me thinking wow that's the atmosphere and noise 10,000 can make and that's how much they love me if he scores a goal or a couple of goals they'll be thinking Jesus Christ I wonder what it's going to be like with 50 or 1,000 there what they'll think of me so it'll be the same sort of thing so yeah, I don't want to go on too much about yesterday's game because so it'll just be a repeat of what I said in the morning after the show. But I'll just sign off by saying I'm just I, I've, I've watched, like I said, I've watched the highlights again. I've watched the first half again. Now done a few errors. Matt Ritchie, I uh, underestimated how, how well you played. But also, it's nice to see Emil Kraft put in a solid performance. Um, much of that helped and aided by uh, Federico Fernandez alongside him, who was. Um, it all but impenetrable very very good Marshall well wow, great leadership um, I I know he's been played on, on the right hand side of the centre back trio and he does like a little foray forward he's got a decent cross on him for a centre back but I think uh, unless Lascelles is playing I, I think he, if he's going to play he has to play in that middle the centre point of that of that back three because it just fits his, you know, no nonsense leadership, hard, loves to fucking head the ball, and it, it's brilliant. And, and you, you've got like a, a diehard Jordy alongside him, Paul Dummett, who will not give in. You heard him um, in the Southampton game when we were down to nine men for like 15 minutes. You heard him, vocal, passionate, just refusal to give up. And then hopefully that attitude can. can uh, can rub off on, on, onto Kraft but it was nice to see him put in a good a decent solid defensive display with no mistakes at all nothing no little wobbles or slips or miss kicks good it's good for his good for his confidence and he's going to need that confidence because we've got fucking Man City coming up anyway so yeah please like the video subscribe to the channel I, I do videos quite regularly um, any ideas let me know. I'm open to ideas. Obviously, most of the time I'm doing it in the car. Sometimes it's in the kitchen. Sometimes it's on the bookcase in the front room. Um, if you'd like me to discuss anything in particular, please let me know. I am open to ideas and uh, willing to listen. Anyway, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video and see you soon.